In this story, when you hear this, it means turn the page. Sooty's Caravan. Sooty and Sweep had made a caravan in the back garden of the Sooteries. As soon as the paint was dry, Sooty pushed his car out of the garage. Come on, Cokey, shouted Sweep. We're going to try the caravan. Cokey and Sweep climbed into the caravan. As soon as he had put a penny in the slot, Sooty drove his little car along the road towards TV Town, with the caravan behind. It went beautifully too, and Cokey and Sweep poked their heads out of the window and cheered like anything. Then they came to the little wooden bridge. Sooty ought to have remembered the bridge when he was making the caravan because it wasn't very wide. In fact, it wasn't as wide as the caravan. Sooty drove onto the bridge, and then he stopped. We're stuck! shouted Koki from the caravan window. Koki was right. They were stuck. Sooty jumped out of the car and stared at the caravan too. The bridge is too narrow, he said. Lots of people would have said that the caravan was too wide, not that the bridge was too narrow, but Sooty blamed the builders of the bridge. Koki and Sweep nodded their heads solemnly to show that they agreed. What are you going to do, Sooty? asked Koki curiously. We'll have to stretch the bridge, said Sooty firmly. So that is what they did. They fetched some rope from the sooteries and tied a piece to each side of the bridge. Then Sooty and Koki sat on their bicycles and one rode one way and one the other. It was just like a tug of war with the bridge in the middle. Sooty and Koki pedalled off at great speed. There was a crack like a pistol shot from the bridge as they reached the end of the slope, and they both fell off their bicycles. It stretched the bridge because there was a gap about a foot wide right across the middle of it. Sooty Sweep and Koki didn't worry about this because, as Sooty said, people didn't have to walk over the middle of the bridge. They put their bicycles away and untied the rope. Then Koki and Sweep climbed into the caravan again and Sooty drove over the bridge. Bridges aren't meant to be stretched after being built, and this one wobbled <coughs> drunkenly as the caravan went over. But Sooty didn't worry over small things like this. He felt very pleased when they had crossed the bridge, and he towed the caravan straight into TV town. Sooty drove past PC Nab's house and straight up the hill outside TV Town. Koki and Sweep sang a duet out of the caravan window. We're driving along, singing a song, as happy as the day is long. Just as they reached the top of the hill, the penny ran out in Sooty's car. Sooty felt in his pockets for a penny. He didn't find one. Koki turned all his pockets out in the middle of the road, but he'd only got a bent coin, five marbles and a melted toffee. Sweep hadn't a pocket, so he couldn't help. Then they saw PC Nab puffing up the hill towards them. PC Nab was out of breath. <sighs> You're blocking the road, Sooty, he said sternly. And the mayor's coach is coming this way in a few minutes. Could you lend me a penny, please, PC Nab? Sooty asked sweetly. Just clear the road, he ordered. Will I have to unhook the caravan and push it to the side of the road? 
said Sooty sadly, and went to find a spanner. Sweep didn't wait for a spanner. He just ran round to the back of Sooty's car and banged the hook out with a stone. He really ought to have thought what would happen if he did this, but he thought about it too late. As soon as the caravan was free, it ran away down the hill. It raced after PC Nab. PC Nab ran like the wind. He was down that hill and through his garden gate before you could say bumps. And he ran through his front door just like a streak of lightning. He shut the door just as the caravan hit the house. The house shook, and Sooty, Koki, and Sweep ran down the hill as fast as they could, because they thought it was going to fall down. When they reached it, they saw that the caravan was stuck so fast to the house that it would have to stay there. Sooty wondered if PC Nab would mind having an extra room to his house like that, but he didn't have a chance to ask him. PC Nab. Was lying on the floor, steaming like a kettle, when Sooty peeped through the window. So Sooty thought he'd better let him cool off before he asked him any questions. I think Sooty was very wise. When the music stops, you can turn your cassette over. Sooty and Sweep's big wash. Sooty and Sweep were washing the windows of the town hall. Mr. Fosspot, the mayor, had asked Sooty to do it for him because the mayor of Magic Town was coming to see him that afternoon. Sooty always liked to please the mayor, so he went and fetched Sweep, and they started to clean the windows straight away. At least. They put the ladder up and found the buckets. Then they went to fetch the water from the tap by the town hall. Sooty struggled with the tap for <coughs> nearly half an hour. He heaved and pushed and pulled and even kicked it once or twice, but it didn't make the slightest difference. It was Sweep who really solved the problem because. He trotted home and fetched Sooty's coal hammer from the sooteries. Sooty was very glad when he saw the coal hammer, and he swung it round his head, and then he hit the tap with it. <coughs> My word! He did give it a blow. Koki said he could hear the clang at the end of the pier. Anyway, it did the trick, because the tap spun round just like a top, and in a trice. The water was pouring out into the bucket. Sooty took the bucket as soon as it was full and went to clean the windows. Sweep filled the other one. Sooty and Sweep worked hard for over an hour, and Sweep filled the buckets while Sooty cleaned the windows. When they had finished, there wasn't a speck of dirt anywhere. Sooty felt. Very proud of himself, as he climbed down the ladder and emptied the bucket down the drain, he went to turn the tap off. It wouldn't move an inch. The water ran down the high street like a river. 
and everybody had to take their shoes off and paddle through it. They all became very annoyed with Sooty and it wasn't long before they were all shouting at him. Turn it off! shouted PC Nab furiously. Well, Sooty had been trying to turn it off for nearly half an hour and couldn't. If you don't, I'll clap you in jail, roared PC Nab. Sooty picked up the coal hammer. For one dreadful moment, Sweet thought he was going to hit the policeman on the head with it. But he didn't. He hit the tap. He took a big jump and gave it a tremendous blow. Instead of the tap spinning round as it had before, it spun Sooty round. Sooty spun round and round until he was so giddy that he dropped the coal hammer. Now, Sooty couldn't possibly have known he was spinning past PC Nab, but he dropped it on the policeman's toe. PC Nab Ow! let out a yell that was heard all over TV town. He picked up the coal hammer and swung it round his head in a temper. <gasps> Perhaps he meant to hit Sooty on the head with it. But Sooty was spinning so fast that he wasn't in the same place for two seconds together, so the policeman missed him. It was a good thing he did, too, because he hit the tap instead. Do you know not a single drop of water has come out of that tap from that day to this? There was only the water in the high street to clear up. That wasn't difficult to do, because the well in TV Square had been dried up for months, so all the water ran into that and filled it up to the top. Mr. Fusspot, the mayor, was delighted when he came out of the town hall and saw how clean everything was. The windows were sparkling like diamonds and the high street hadn't been so clean for years. You're a very clever little teddy bear, Sooty, he said as he beamed down at him. Nobody will ever know what PC Nab would have said, because as he was about to say something, he had to stop, because the mayor of Magic Town arrived at the town hall, which was just as well for Sooty. Sue's Stolen Bracelet Sooty and his friends were on holiday at the seaside. The weather was fine and Sooty hired a boat so that he could go sailing with Sweep and Butch. Sue went along too. Sue had put on a necklace and bracelet. The pretty stones shone in the sun as she trailed her hand in the water. But someone else saw her bracelet. And suddenly, a long, thin arm hugged at the beads. Help! cried Sue as her bracelet vanished. Sue burst into tears. <laughs> Don't worry, we will get it back for you, said Sooty. He and Sweep put on underwater masks and dived into the sea. They saw a fish swimming by and asked if he had seen the bracelet. I can guess who has it. The pirate Octopus, said the fish. I've got an idea how to get the bracelet back, said Sooty. We need Butch's help. They swam back to the boat and told Sue to hold out her necklace. I hope I don't lose this as well, said Sue. Sooty and Sweep watched from behind the rocks. Suddenly, the pirate octopus came out of his cave. He had seen the necklace shining in the sun and reached out to grab it. But Butch had made a noose in a strong rope and dropped it over the octopus. The friendly fish led Sooty and Sweep into the pirate's cave. All 
kinds of treasure was piled up inside it. Here is Sue's bracelet! cried Sweep. Sooty and Sweep swam back to the boat and gave Sue her bracelet. Butch was tying up the pirate octopus when Father Neptune came out of the sea. Thank you for catching the pirate, he said. He stole a lot of my treasure. I'll take him away so he won't bother you again, Sooty.